All right, Minister Seymour. Yes, sir. Minister Seymour, where, where are you from originally? Where'd you grow up? From Chicago. And you're still based there? Yes, sir. Tell me about your childhood. You had both your parents when you were a kid? Uh, yes, I had when I was a kid. My mother died when I was a little boy. I was about seven, eight years old. I'm sorry. And how would you describe your childhood? Well, it was rough coming up, coming up. Uh, the babysitters used to keep me and my brothers, as you know, for fine out. Daddy used to go to work. What, what, did, what did your dad do for work? Daddy was a, a, a minister at his own church, so sometime the, the babysitters come over, you know, and trick me and my brothers in the bed with her. <laughs> so what what could we do? So your your sexual activity started at what age? Well, about seven to ten, you know. You know, the babysitters, you know, the women, they want to play with the little boys, you know, the, when the little boys go through things in life, so it changed their life too, you know. How far did you go in school? I finished school, went two years of college, you know. Yeah, yeah. And what, did you have dreams of doing something in life that? Uh, well, I did. I had dreams of doing a lot of things. When you was uh, disturbed, you, you know, my like I said, my mother she passed when I was a little boy. You know, I did finish school, but I was something like the preacher kids in the neighborhood stayed in trouble all the times. You know, broke in the telephones, took all the dimes out the telephones and nickels. You know, and uh, uh, back then, you know, uh, I'm in my sixties now, so you know, we're talking about years ago. It was used to cost. Uh, 15 cent to make a phone call, so t 10 cent. So they made a phone call. Used to, I used to bust all the telephones and take all the cash out the uh, telephone machines and take it home to me and my brothers and feed me and my brothers, you know. And how did you get introduced to the, the world of? Well, you know, uh, I wound up going to school too. I suppose I've been doing my homework. I made a, I wound up at my English teacher house, you know, so, hey, man, I had to do what I had to do to survive, you know, to, to put food on the table, you know, which I came from a good family, but they say the preacher kids were some of the baddest kids in the neighborhood, and I was I was one of them. And did you have someone to show you the ropes, or you just figured it out? Well, I had some great uncles, you know, uh, one named uh, Richard Titwell, one of the greatest player. He was a boss player, gambler, dressed a lot. I w used to watch him and stay sharp all the time. He used to wear hats. That's why I got my hats and my dressing from one of my mother's brothers. His name was, they called him Peanut, Titwell. Mm -hmm. So he was one of your role models? One of them, and I had an uncle named George Beard. He was one of my uh, mentors too, you know, and uh, on my daddy's side, my daddy brother. He was a great player, you know, and I always watched them too coming up. They was good dressers and had some of the fanciest cars. I watched them with my cars and my clothes, and you know, I got a lot of knowledge from my family. The, you know, the your sense of style, the way you dress, your 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 attitude—that's a big part of. of you know, I got, I got it from my, one of my uncles. Like I said, his name was uh, Peanut. We call him Peanut, but Floyd Titwell was his name. But the that that. Ability to attract a female is a big part of. of oh well, what we'll factor females is just like. What track you become that way? If you see a woman sharp, looking good and real clean, looking beautiful, when they see the same thing in a man, if he looking good, dressed, got his nice hat on, his shoes shine, a nice suit on, a necktie, they love that, you know? And that opens the door for opportunities to? Well, it opens up a lot of things for you, just not no door. It'll give you a place to lay your head, it'll feed you. You know, it'll do a lot of things for you. Keep money in your pocket. Yeah. And uh, have you been married? Man, I'm married now. I've been with my wife 45 years. Congratulations. 45 years and living in one of the biggest, pretty houses. I got business, construction business, beauty shops, barber shops, a fur company. I customize cars. I'm doing great for myself. That's how I did things in life. When I, when I made money, I put it to the side. I never drank, I never got high. I never smoked in my life. My friends did all that, I just didn't choose that life. And uh, tell me about some of the girls that have worked for you, how, how many? Well, it's not only the girls work for you, it, it wasn't that, it was just, man, I always been a superstar. In my game, I always been a superstar, not no pimp. People look at you because you dress, and when they see you with a big hat on, you're a pimp, no, uh-uh, I'm a, always been a great superstar 
if somebody wants, the chick wants to give me some cash, I'm going to accept it, you know. So a lot of times you you get with these fast girls, they don't want to go to bed. A lot of time, guys look at them, they be pretty. They want some knowledge. They disturb. They've been abused. They've been raped since they was babies. So they need somebody to encourage them and keep on telling them what to do to get on the right road. So that's when you gain your points by putting it in their head and telling them what they need to hear. Hey, man, being a friend is some of the best things you can come up with, being a woman friend instead of being a man laying down with a... Man, I played had the dick on a lot of chicks. I didn't have to do all that. Like I said, I've been a superstar. And I got paid for what I knew. And I shared the game with them. And you're giving them guidance as well. So much guidance. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. They paid for knowledge. A lot of guys, no, no, you ain't got whatever these guys want to do, that's on them. I, like I said, I've been a great superstar all my life. I've been a boss player. I dress, I look good wherever I went. Have you done any prison time? Uh, just a little bit. About four or five months or something like that. And the girls that you would, uh, that, that would help you, that you Me, would guide? I, I'm, I'm a type of dude, when I was coming up, it ain't girls, girls. I mean, I had one or two chicks in my game have had problems, came to me for a name to be behind them because a lot of guys come on them strolls and come on the sets, jump on them and beat up. They can use my name or, or use the next boss player name and want some, some, uh, somebody to stand with them because they checking all this money. But if they can use your name, they can share that money with you, man. And you're married, but would you have sex with the girls? No, I ain't have to. I play hide the dick. I didn't have to do that. The little head to make a fool out of the big head, I never did that. See, the little head can make a fool out of the big head. I never had to do that. A lot of dudes did it, I guess. I didn't have to do that. Right. How do you handle your girls? If they got out of line, if they got a little headstrong, anything like that? Well, I'm telling you, it ain't the girls. It's when a person come to me, if a girl come to me needs some acknowledgments, some encouragements, I'm going to give it to them straight off the top. They can talk to whoever they want to talk to, be with whoever they want to be with. Hey, man, I've always been a superstar. I'm your friend. I can be your friend more than be your man. So you give them freedom? Hey, man, they came in free. They can go as freedom. You respect people. To give respect, you got to give it. You got to be a gentleman out here, man. I feel sorry for a lot of brothers, you know, when they mess with these unaged girls and get in a world of trouble. Hey, man, I just don't live like that, man. Like I said, I had to play my game way different than a lot of brothers did, man. You know, I always been alone. I'll ride by myself, hang by myself. I don't need all that. You don't, you don't need nobody to help you count your money. You need somebody to go with you to put it in the bank? No, you need your money by yourself. So the laws have changed in this game quite a bit. Oh, man, super, super game. It's, it's, it's become much more dangerous, right? Well, it's been dangerous all the time. Yeah, but Girls have got their throat slow men have got their throat sliced too, sitting in the car dating the chick. No, I'm not talking about the you danger know, on the street. I'm talking it, the danger at the place. And the, it's the, dangerous. It's, it never changed. It's just got took it to a little, another level, but that mur murder have been going on for beginning of time. It's just to sharpen it up a little bit. That's all because the young generation don't know what to do. They do what they want to do. What, what is it about the street life that makes it so addictive to so many people? Man, the drugs. The drugs and took over. That's the pimp, if you want to know the pimp. That's the pimp, the drugs is the pimp. I'm going to tell you something. Niggas be thinking, a guy, I think, because he is a pimp, because he got a suit on, no. The chick looking for somebody to encourage them, they, they don't know how to master their money. So you just there to help them to master their money. A chick don't need you. What she need you for? To fool you, to make you think that you this and that? No. Hey, man, I always stayed on the line. Like I said, I always been a superstar. If a chick wanted to give me some money, I'm going to accept the money because I'm getting them all my game, all my knowledge, telling them what to do and what not to do. What personality traits do you look hmm? for in a girl? Hmm? What personality traits do you look for in a girl? 
man, it, it, it don't make a difference. You know, uh, it's kind of hard, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's really hard, but it don't make a difference, bro. You can work with whoever. Man, it's like you go in the grocery store, if it's somebody you, you can encourage, you'll work with them. You'll talk to them. That's all you there for the money. You're not there for the honey. I'm there for the money. I don't want the honey. I want the money. What's, what's more important to you, love or money? I'd rather be loved. Love come first. I love, I love to love somebody that who wants to be loved. And you got to understand that, you know. I love the money. I ain't going to be crazy and say money. But, hey, man, everybody want to be loved. How many years have you been doing this? It's a long time. Man, I've been doing it all my life. Since I've been in the street, riding slick, looking slick, you know, have my hand out for some bread. I'm sure you've seen some crazy stuff. Man, I've seen a lot of crazy things. But some things is not to be told, talked about and seen. Sometimes you got to be quiet. And what are your thoughts on how the game has changed? Well, the way I dress now, you got new generation guys come around now. No way in the world I wore some blue jeans with a, with a belt, not no belt, and wear my pants down. Hey, man, my granddaddy was a dressing man. He dressed. He wore, he wore hats and wore overalls. And he never wore pants with no belt. His pants, man, I couldn't even walk in the house around none of my people, my granddaddy or grandma mom, with my pants down. You couldn't have did it either. Mm -hmm. That's what changed things. Who want to show they behind? I look, you walking, I come to your house and I got my drawers down showing your wife my butt. That's disrespectful. And it's disrespectful for you inviting me over to your house and telling your, your girl I'm your friend. He got his showing his behind. Dressing the way you do, right? Man, Here I today, dress, you, you, you command through, respect. Man, through the week, I, I I wear a lot of work clothes. I dress down. I I clean up. I sweep. I paint. I have to go behind the the the, the, the guys that working for me. I'm working on cars. I love to work on cars. I got a trade, man. I learned to work on cars. I learned to do some positive. I know a lot of brothers. Don't know how to do nothing. I got a friend now. Don't even know how to change the tire if he catch a flat. All he know how to do is just put gas in the car. How many cars you got? Man, I have a lot of cars. I saw what you pulled up in here. Yeah, I got a lot of cars. You're, you're the, we're the players ball here in Atlanta. Well, I must be just only, we've been doing these players ball over 40 some years. I must support my friend on his birthday because he, they just gave me a big party, my wife, my sons. They just gave me a big party in Chicago. I mean, you couldn't even get in. And uh, my friend, he was there for me as usual. And uh, I've changed my life. God gave me a chance to change my life. I'm in church a lot, man. I pray a lot. I'm singing in the choir. I'm playing music. You know, it's a big change in my life, you know. So, hey, man, I love the Lord. And I'm going to stay with the Lord. I'm going to go to church every Sunday. I got grandchildren. I got great-grandchildren in, in church. So I'm marching with my grandbabies. So, some people listening to this would have a hard time reconciling the fact that you're a religious, a religious well, man, and yet you're... Again, like I said, I was the preacher's son. The preacher kids were the baddest kids in the neighborhood, breaking people, windows out their cars, fighting all the time, starting a lot of mess. Hey, man, I'm a way better young man than I used to be. You know, everybody want to be in the game. Everybody want to be a game. Everybody want to be fight. Everybody wanted a Cadillac. Every man I know right now want a pretty Cadillac and want a woman to put some gas in this car and buy him a suit. So that's nothing new to the community in the neighborhood because everybody want their car no paid. Not just only the men. The women want their house no paid. They, get you, they give you a piece of that potato pie. They want their house no pay. They want their car no pay. They want their nails did. They want their hair did. So for the lawyers, the doctors, the police officers, the judges, have been supporting the players and the pimps, <laughs> welcome to the club. Because if it weren't for y'all, we couldn't have been looking this good. What's the most important lesson you've learned in all your years? Man, the most important lesson I learned 
If you got a family, if you got grandbabies, you got a wife, you got children, respect your home. Whatever you do out in that street, don't take it home. Leave it in the street. Because your grandbaby, your son, your daughters is watching you. The best thing I can tell you to do, get in the Lord house. I'm in church, man. Out of 30 years of God, I've changed my life. I've been a great, better father for my children. And I can say, hey, man, I've been out here with some of the greatest brothers. I used to see some of the greatest gamblers have shopping bags of money. I see them today. They don't even have shoes on their feet. So, hey, man, I can say I thank God for changing my life and giving me a chance to get myself together. I just want to say that the ones that's out there, try to show love in your house. Where the rapists has come from, the girls getting raped, your nieces and nephew, it comes from somebody out of your household. Your mama, brother, sister, uncle, or somebody to mess with that baby. So question them babies and ask to see if anybody been downstairs tampering with them. And tell them that you love your babies. When you tell them that you love them and spend time with them, and don't bring anybody around your house. You're going to hit jackpot. If you know what I mean by jackpot. But respect your house. That's what I learned. My daddy told me, he said, man, I wish I would have stayed home with your mama. And I used to hear him say that all the time. If your family, you and your wife is not getting along, you go in one room, she go in another room. Learn how to shut the hell up. I'm talking to the men's today. Learn to be quiet. Learn how to take some mess. Because a woman, all she got for you is she can cook for you good, wash your clothes, and spread eagle for you. Cross the bed. That's what she got for you. And when she spread eagle for you good, that's like heaven. It must be heaven. So if you have not learned anything I have said today, you are lost. I'm going to respect first. Then she must respect you. You the man of the house. You the king of your house. You are the man in the street. Any pimple player, you are the king. But you got to respect your products. You can't dog your products as you're not going to get nothing back. You grow beautiful grass, you're going to get beautiful grass. So that's what I learned. Respect will take you a long ways. Do not let the little head make a fool out of the big head. Respect your home. That's number one. Do not bring all your friends over your house. Number two, respect your mother and father. If you don't respect your mother and father, you're not going to respect your sisters and brothers. And then if you don't respect home, you're not going to respect the, the street. And then they're going to kill you. You're going to respect the streets. The streets got something for you. Street got something for you. The devil got something for you. You keep knocking on the devil door, he got something for you. Stop knocking on the devil door. Go find you a job. When I was coming up, I used to knock on my neighbors door to take their garbage out. I used to shovel their snow. I used to clean up their backyard. I used to go in the grocery stores and help everybody who need groceries taken to their car. I would do that. It's always a way of making money. You ain't got to rob. You ain't got to steal. You ain't got to lie. You can win like I won. I won. Because I played the game fair. Respect. Don't steal from your best friend. Don't steal from your best friend. That's the point today. You killed your best friend in school, went to school with you, killed him. You shot him in the back because he was getting more money than you was getting. The drug dealers, I'm speaking on now. But it pays to do right today. If you don't have to go outside, don't go outside. Go look for a job. If somebody got work for you, but remember what I said again, respect will go a long ways for you. The same thing will make you laugh, gonna make you cry. What do you think the biggest problem is in the, uh, 
the poorer communities, the inner city? When the poor community today, like I said, uh, it's been child abuse. It's child abuse and no respect in the home. That's why the young peoples are doing what they're doing today. Because the mothers and fathers ain't got time to train them. The mothers and fathers, majority of them in jail, but grandmama can only do what she have to do. She can only do so much. These kids so bad now, man, they taking pills. The Audi home is fuller than the penitentiaries now. The Audi homes. It's kids killing their mothers and fathers. They're killing their grandmamas. It's one kid from the west side where I come from. The mama told him, if some wish to ever happen to me, I got a half a million dollar policy for you. What did she tell that kid for that? He set his mom off and got her killed and collect the money. Now he in jail. So stop telling your children so much. Right now, put the prayer back in your house. Put the Bible back on your table. Sit down and talk to your kids. Whooping them ain't going to help. You got the mothers and fathers got to spend more time with their children. Now, when you don't want to spend time, do not bring different men around your children. I don't care what you do. Don't bring them in your house. Do not bring different spirits in your house. And I learned that, man. I thank God for changing my life. If God can save me, he can save you. If you can walk into church and say, hey, I want to change my life. God will change your life. It's what you want to do with yourself. You ain't got to be out here selling your body. Laying down with this man, laying down with this, this woman, laying down with this woman today, laying down with that man. You ain't got to do that. That's no good. That was, that was a poor thing that happened to me when I was a kid with the babysitter. He used to take me and my brothers and take us in the room. When you grow older, you think, of, you think about it, you think about it, you think about it, you do something to the children. So pay attention to your children. If you ain't got a lot of money, keep them clean. Keep them clean. Comb their hair. Out. Go to the thrift store and find them some shoes. They got some cheap shoes in there, but wash them and keep your kids clean. Comb their hair. Keep them in clean clothes and you'll feel good inside. And someone will see you doing right I said, I'm going to give that person a chance. But you out there acting a fool, it's no good. Say no to drugs, them pills. Don't let no man give you no pills. Don't let nobody give you no alcohol. Don't let nobody give you nothing. If you're doing wrong, stop. Torch yourself and say, I'm not going back out there no more. I'm not going to do it. I don't care if I don't have a meal today. If you go over some of your friends that you say don't like you, knock on their door and say, listen, I've changed my life. Whatever leftovers y'all have at home for me and the kids, please call us. I'll come and get them. We're looking for help right now. If you act with your pride, you got too much pride. You don't want to help. You don't even want to ask somebody for to help you. That's what we need today. You got to open up and ask for help today. If you ask for help, you're going to see what you're going to get because somebody's going to help you. If you say, man, please, I'm hungry. Me and my babies, we ain't, we ain't ate today. When you cook, would you put us something to the side? I bet you they put something to the side for you. Because the first thing going to say, she, that girl came by my house, and she said the kids and they was, us was hungry. And I put them something to the side, and I feel good, and I'm going to help them tomorrow. Respect. But you got to get yourself together. Starting today. Not tomorrow, right now. But you got to look up towards heaven and call on the Lord. Almighty Jesus Christ, he will help you. And learn to be quiet, talking so much with that dead tit. Your pink tornado will get you in a world of trouble. Learn to be quiet. If you got a mother, father, sisters, and brother, call them and tell them you love them. They don't know about love because you ain't never told them you love them. So now you tell them not because they ain't never told you. So you pick up that phone and call seven peoples in your family and say, look, I just want to say I love you. Do that every day. It's going to come natural. Your children are going to hear you say that. They'll know what love is. They don't know because you don't know. What does Square is not understand? 
because because what you're talking about, you're you're talking about a lot of religion. You're talking about believing in the Lord and all this, but you, then you're also doing things that a lot of people, a lot of squares would say, well, "Oh, how could you do I'm that?" I'm going to tell you something. I was on the I was I was on the site working with Nick Cannon, and I was t I got to talking about the Lord. They told me to leave. You know, uh, I was shooting a video. Some of his people told me at one time for that. So I'm talking to the square peoples too. Don't you know the girls in the church, the square girls? Don't you know when they at home sometime at night, they put on their daughter's skirts and look in the mirror. They want to look like that too. So you got to watch the square girls too. They got it in them too now. And then what make it so bad, you girls, you girls don't even have time to entertain your husband. So that's why, that's why the men's run away from home. Cause you can't satisfy your husband. Study how to satisfy your husband. But what you do, you get in the bed with them old holes in your drawers. When you're supposed to have bikini panties or some on, uh, no panties for your man. You women don't know how to entertain your man. So that's why they run in the street all the time. But what I was trying to tell them, I'm talking to the squares and the uh, street people. Respect go a long ways. So if you respect yourself first, you ain't got to stoop down level. But call on the man upstairs. That's what saved me. I'm in church. I'm going to stay on my bending knees. I don't care what you got to say bad about me. Everybody done done some wrong in life and got a dead skeleton still in their closet. Me, I'm not 100%, but I'm 65% of trying to do right. May God bless you and may God keep you. But don't forget to pray. Get on your knees and pray. God bless you. All right, Minister Seymour, thank you so much. Okay. May God bless you. Do the right thing and God will cover you.